Okay, I gotta try this one more time, and if this doesn't work, then we may have to just go door to door giving people the forecast. So far, it looks like things are working pretty good for right now. It doesn't look like too much of a major concern at this time, but again, we will let you know about that. Let's go ahead and give this a test and see if we're actually getting anything from anywhere out there this evening. Looks like we might be getting a signal out there. If you are with us, go ahead and tap on the screen or say something interesting, and we'll see if we can broadcast that out there. Good. Okay, so far so good. Got a green light on that, so no problems there. Pardon for all the talking to myself or just the empty air, but just trying to make certain everything is exactly where it is. Rule of thumb, always make certain that you restart your computer and your phone every single time before you go on the air. Don't ask me how I know this. So as of right now, we're looking again some uh, pretty quiet conditions for right now. We do have again some pretty quiet conditions for the time being into the next day or so, the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you're joining us on Periscope and Twitter, welcome to the show. We'll start here in just a little bit. Uh, again, starting off a little bit late thanks to our technical difficulties and the fact that we don't have and uh, seems to be enough internet signal for some odd reason for some time around there. Uh, so far, so good for tonight. Again, a few showers and thunderstorms out across the Mid-South. So if everything is working... And it seems to be, at this point in time, good audio signal from what I can see. And we'll re-invite everybody from our Facebook family on there to rejoin us at this point. Uh, audio signal appears to be working pretty well at this time, so no problem there at all. So good news on that. Uh, starting off again, things really on the quiet side. We don't have a lot happening for the time being. Now into this next weekend, if you were planning excuse me, on doing some observing of the Perseid meteor shower. Not the best news, unfortunately, because we've got, again, what looks to be some cloudy skies heading our direction for the Mid-South. Add to that the possibility of maybe some more areas of showers and thunderstorms out there for right now. Uh, from the bedroom across the hall, thank you very much to Melissa Onik, my love and wife, and checking on the internet signal. Thank you very much. That helps out a lot. Adam Smith, welcome to the show, and good evening. Trying this again. This is take two if you are just joining us for right now. Some internet problems here and there, but so far so good uh, from what it looks like. Like if you're just joining us, if you've never been here before, this is our exclusive video weather blog taking a look at the forecast and whatever else we can throw into here. Forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen, red bar, social media also there and also that way on the middle portion of your screen over there. I wish OBS came with a telestrator. All I've got is just the cursor screen and unfortunately it doesn't really work too well to show the people on OBS watching on Periscope and Twitter what that looks like. Jimmy O'Connor, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us for tonight. Uh, for tonight, we'll take a look at the tropics, and as of right now, things are a little bit quieter, but we are still not even close to the midpoint of the season. So we've got a lot more to go out there and a couple of storms to take a look at. Not to, I don't want to say worry about because I don't ever want to say that. Uh, never a time to panic about things. Always a time to make certain that you are prepared and ready to go, especially if you are traveling. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate Appreciate the help on that. Let's go ahead and hop into it right now and take a look and see what's going on around the Mid-South area. We do have, again, a little bit of activity when it comes to uh, some areas of sprinkles. We'll take a look at those coming up here in just a little bit. I want to focus in on Shelby County for just a second, and especially the Mississippi River. If you take a look right in through here, that's the Mississippi River area, right on down through that location going down through downtown. And the reason I'm posting this on here, kind of hard to see with this uh, animation, but if you take a look into the area right around the Mississippi, you may notice kind of a stronger signal uh, coming into the area right on in through here. Notice the background, the greens and the yellows. Uh, that's not rainfall forming out there. That's actually a collection of insects that form right over uh, the Mississippi Valley from downtown all the way up into Tipton and Mississippi counties. That's the insects coming out to play for the evening. And if you watch our uh, signal in the morning, if you watch what goes on out there, you can actually see way back up around, say, uh, Real Foot Lake into this area and then back across the area of northeast Arkansas and occasionally some from around here. They're called bird rings. They show rings, circles going outwards 
from a certain location, and that's flocks of birds being detected on the radar screen. It's not something you see unless, again, you have a whole bunch of birds in one location or another, but we'll be posting more about that tomorrow. If you see anything like that out there, nothing strange about that. It's just nature. Let's go ahead and see what's going on where it comes to rainfall out there. Uh, could be a shower, could be a few flocks of birds trying to come in for a landing around the reservoir area. This drifting its way uh, back to the west around Potts Camp and Holly Springs. So we could see again some uh, flocks of birds taking place there or a few scattered showers possible. The only thing we really have on radar at this time that's left over directly in the viewing area, McNary County, a few scattered showers back around the Selmer area. And beyond that, we're just not seeing again too much of anything out there in the way of really heavy amounts of rainfall at this point in time. So uh, that's about all that we've got so far. So if you have any plans for traveling for tonight, that is what you're going to have to watch out for. And beyond that, we're just, again, not seeing too much of anything out there. A few scattered showers around Waterloo, back toward Alabama, and then back down toward Aberdeen, north of there around Amory, hope I'm saying that right, into around northeast areas of Mississippi. Beyond that, we're clear for right now, but we will be looking for more chances of scattered showers as we get into tomorrow and into the weekend. We'll talk about that forecast coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on out there. Twitter handle, well, that's a little bit jumping the gun. We'll get to that in just a little while. We do have, again, some pretty warm conditions out there, so if you have anything in the way of uh, plans for amounts of rainfall into the area for your garden. You may need some of that coming up uh, relatively soon. We should be getting that actually in the course of the next couple of days. Currently on the weather underground system, we again have a decent amount of uh, temperatures still back in the mid to upper 80s, so we have a plenty of heat and humidity out across uh, much of the Mid-South. Bart Thompson, thanks for joining us for tonight. Appreciate you coming along for the uh, ride for this evening. Again, so far it's pretty quiet, but it is still very warm. Uh, East Memphis temperatures again showing up here with temperatures back into around the mid 80s, and that's pretty prevalent across much of the area. Winds are not doing much to cool anybody off. They're just kind of drifting a little bit, and that's pretty much about all that we've got at this time. Trying to cool you off a little bit, let's head to the next rock from the Sun, Mars, from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and taking a look at the area into and around the Remote Environmental Monitoring Station on Mars. This is what the temperatures look like on the Red Planet just about uh, two days ago, two, three days ago, so we were able to see a little bit more about what the temperature was doing here. Uh, a maximum temperature, this ought to warm you up a little bit or cool you down anyway, maximum air temperature of negative 9.4 on Mars. That was the high for the day near the Curiosity rover site. So that, again, a little bit on the chilly side there. A low temperature of 108 degrees below zero. That's the air temperature. The ground temperature managed to get up to 32 degrees that also in Fahrenheit and 124.6 below zero. If you'd like to see more about this, all you have to do is go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory website at mars.nasa.gov for more information. More about our big blue marble and what it looks like down here. Take a look and see what's happening on our cameras from the area into and around the Mid-South area. Let's take a zoomed in close up look if my internet signal will forgive me on that. Uh, looking again at a little bit of leftover sunlight, barely a view of sunset left over at this point from the area around Germantown Parkway at St. Francis in Cordova, which I will be at on the day of the eclipse. So hopefully going to be seeing some clearer skies for that. We'll talk more about the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Rain across the Mid-South, a few areas of showers showing up earlier today, but really just not much more beyond that. Some thunderstorms back to our west and that's part of our next storm system, which will be heading our way. We'll talk more about that coming up here. Matter of fact, right now, here's what it looks like across much of the Mid-South. Again, what we're looking at so far is this next system coming on through. It does not look like anything so far in the way of anything major taking place, but it is going to really ramp up the possibility of showers and thunderstorms into the Mid-South. And as an added bonus, it looks like part of it is going to be sticking around into the weekend. So that's what we're going to be looking for for this next system to come on through. So if you have outdoor plans tomorrow, Saturday, and especially Sunday, you may need to come up with some indoor events if at all possible. Diane Watkins, welcome from uh, Victoria, Mississippi. Thanks for joining us for tonight. 
National Weather Service, again, so far the good news is showing a uh, little, if anything, taking place, but they are still watching again for the possibility right around Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of maybe some stronger thunderstorms taking place. Doesn't look like severe weather at this time. We'll take a look at the Storm Prediction Center forecast in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and run you through the numbers at this point and show you more about what's going on out there. Again, temperatures into the next couple of days will be very much on the warm side once again. Not seeing much of any relief out there from the chances of of any dry weather coming on through, which would be very nice, but not going to be happening. High temperatures into tomorrow, pushing 90 degrees in some areas. Also looking again at the possibility of some more thunderstorms out there. A 50% chance, fairly widespread starting early in the morning, and that'll be coming on through, and that'll be going on through the rest of the evening. Low temperatures tomorrow back into the mid-70s. Chances of thunderstorms wane a little bit, but they'll be back again as we go into the weekend. High temperatures on Saturday back into the mid to upper 80s. So once again, another very warm and muggy weekend coming up. Chances of showers and thunderstorms most numerous from the metro to the southwest. So Jonesboro, Clarksdale, Tupelo, Oxford, Forest City, you're going to be picking up the best possibility of thunderstorms as we go into Saturday. Billy Franklin, welcome from Lexington, Tennessee. Thanks for joining us uh, for tonight. Low temperatures on Saturday night, mid to upper 60s to right around the lower 70s, and chances of rainfall dwindle again by a little bit, only about uh, 20, 30 percent, somewhere in there, even into the teens from Union City down to Tupelo, so not much of an activity expected there. Hang on a second, though. High temperatures on Sunday, mid-80s, a little bit less heat with, again, the possibility of more clouds and rainfall out there, and then chances of precipitation back to about the 50% range. We'll take it into Monday, Sunday night, low temperatures, again, lower 70s, not seeing much of a change there, and 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms for Sunday night. High temperatures on Monday back into the mid to upper 80s, very warm, very muggy once again, and more chances of showers and thunderstorms. Now, this is the forecast for this coming Monday, a week before the eclipse. So this is not the official forecast for the eclipse coming up. Now into this weekend, I want to take it back, step it back for just a second to uh, Saturday night and show you a little bit more about what we're going to be expecting. By about 10 o'clock into around the area close to about 1 o'clock in the morning, the gray colors you see on screen, this is not entirely good news for those of you who are hoping to go out and get uh, more views of the Perseid meteor shower. It'll be peaking this weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, into that area, and maybe a few stragglers on uh, Sunday as Earth leaves the meteor stream. But unfortunately, it looks like on Saturday night, things are going to be very close to overcast, maybe catching a few meteors out there, but that's really going to be the best that it gets. So not good news where that's concerned for any uh, stargazers out there or meteor catchers uh, over the course of the next few days. Again, cloud cover on Saturday, just not really looking all that good at this point. So it'd be nice, but it doesn't really look like any good news for us. Storm Prediction Center, best possibility of anything involving thunderstorms will be back to our west for this evening and into around the rest of the forecast. Again, best possibility tonight will be well back to our west with the area mainly back around the panhandle of Oklahoma, northern panhandle of Texas. Not that much going on anything at this point in time. Bart Thompson, have we ever thought of doing a uh, severe weather watchers course online? We have thought about that actually and we were uh, exploring some possibilities with uh, the gentlemen and ladies over at the National Weather Service in Memphis, but that was uh, several years ago. Haven't really explored too much of anything else like that at this point in time. I'll have to get back in contact with um, Mr. Jim Bellis and see if we could do maybe an online course or a repeatable online course if and when there are chances of severe weather or winter weather or anything like that going on. But that's thank you for reminding me about that. We'll uh, get back to you on that later on, so keep it tuned for more. National Hurricane Center Franklin, what's left of it is just a disorganized mess of thunderstorms over basically Central America and over toward New the area of southern Mexico. Now, if it makes its way out into the Pacific, it could be another storm system, but it'll be heading westerly and away from us, so not expecting much of anything out of that. Now, the other storm systems we have, one is just off the coast of Florida, where we had that one just a couple of weeks ago. 10% development chance out of this, and 
it looks like it's going to be heading uh, so far back to the northeast across the southwest Atlantic. So this does not appear to be too much of a concern right now. Likewise, the storm system uh, sitting into around the area uh, just off the Leeward Islands. This one that you see here. 40% development in the next five days. So this one also could be something to watch out for. Hopefully it takes a turn back out into the waters of the Atlantic and is not a threat to anything like Florida or the Bahamas or anything like that. But two systems at this point in time to take a look at. And so far, nothing coming off of Africa that we need to see about being concerned about. But keep in mind, this is just before the peak of the season. We have a lot to do. We have a long way to go. So if you are traveling, once again, to anywhere around the Gulf, the East Coast, or Florida, you need to watch this weather because you do not want to be heading into a situation that you're going to have to turn right back around of and get back out of, if at all possible. Weather for the eclipse, taking a look uh, using the uh, weather underground graphics. Uh, this one only goes up until next Saturday, but it does still show the possibility of showers and thunderstorms back in the mix and some fairly cloudy skies. That's about two days before the eclipse happens. We're hoping to get things cleared out. August does have this annoying habit of popping up some showers and thunderstorms in the midst of keeping things very much on the warm and muggy side. So this is something we'll have to hope for that we clear things out, but so far it's looking kind of ee for right now, and that's a scientific term by the way for the eclipse coming up in the next few days. We'll keep you updated on that. Assuming that we do get some good skies for the eclipse, you may want to line up some of these things to keep your kids uh, interested and occupied because when the shadow is cast through anything, through leaves on the tree, through holes in uh, artwork or paper or anything else, it casts a round shadow of the sun. But as the moon covers the surface, the shadows will correspondingly show a crescent shape. And if you use something like you see here on spaceweather.com, like a colander, that'll cast a whole bunch of different uh, shadow castings. And that'll be kind of neat to take a look at. So if you'd like to see more ideas about what you can do with the kids when the eclipse happens, again, remembering to look away from the eclipse uh, just to be on the safe side, you can find out more about what to do. There's a great article on spaceweather.com for more information there. Remember, uh, National Weather, well, uh, the Shelby County. Office of Preparedness is spreading the word about a new amateur radio license prep class. This will be taught by Germantown Fire Department, by Captain Howard Thompson specifically, also a ham radio operator, and this will be starting in the next couple of weeks, August 17th. This will be held at Germantown Fire Station number 4, that's on Forest Hill Irene Road. The course is free, the textbook is $25. It's a very good way to stay up to date on what's going on with amateur radio, so please if you've never considered getting your license, consider it. If you've considered it and kind of dropped the idea, now's a great time to do it. Captain Thompson uh, teaches a great class. I got my general level license uh, from him last year at about the same time. So this will be the basic lowest level license, and it's a great opportunity to learn more about what you can do with your communications license from the FCC. If you'd like to know more about this, you can go to staysafeshelby.org. US, or you can give uh, Captain Thompson and the uh, fire department a call. Uh, the information and the registration link is there, uh, jelly at germantown hyphen tn. Dot gov. Uh, and this is something, again, that's uh, important here. Morse code is not required to get your license. That's something that caused a little bit of rancor with a lot of ham radio operators out there. Uh, but Morse code is no longer a requirement for this. But if you'd like to know more about this, again, stay safe, Shelby. Dot us And if you'd like to know more about this, you can contact Captain Thompson or Bill Stevens, uh, license WC9S, and more information, again, is included at Stay Safe Shelby on the Office of Preparedness, so a great opportunity to learn more about what's going on there. More details about my forecast, science, all kinds of neat stuff, and it's World Lion Day, so learn more about what conservation is all about and how tragic it would be if we lost these magnificent
and creatures and would only be able to learn about them in storybooks and videos. So take a look and see what World Lion Day is all about. And also don't forget about my Twitter page. It's all available at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Pictures, we would love to see them. If you got weather pictures from around the Mid-South, please send them in. We can't show them. We can't feature them if you don't send them. You can drop them here to this email address. You can send it here to, again, aonic underscore WREG3. You can post them on my Facebook page. We would love to have more information about what's going on from you out there. And again, please send them along to us. We would love to have uh, more information about that, more details about science and weather and ecology and conservation and all kinds of great stuff, all available right here, again, at facebook.com slash WREG, Austinonic WREG. Don't forget about my forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3, uh, Sports uh, AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. If you'd like to know more about that, tune into Bob and Josh. Also, you can join us on Talkback Live next network if you'd like to be able to get more information about what goes on into around there tune in with bob and josh for sports chat do you mind i'm on i'm, I'm netcasting here and yet all you do is just look at me yeah crinkle crinkle to you too small shorky giving us ah there we go hang hang on a second there we go. Come here, you. Okay, not going to happen tonight, I guess. Sorry about that. Anyway, small dog playing with a crinkle sock. That's that noise that you hear in the background in case you wonder what all that was about. And she's deceptively crafty trying to get away from me. Anyway, enough of that. If you have any questions about the forecast or anything else you'd like to see on here, this is where you go to Austin to austin.onic at wreg.com or here, wreg.com slash weather. That'll wrap things up for tonight. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We'll keep you updated on the rest of the forecast again here and also throughout the rest of the week and right on into the weekend. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on with the complete forecast. Thanks for joining us and keep it tuned for more from News Channel 3.